painted this golden wattle or acacia pignantha for an online tutorial that I have and I decided that I would like to add a seed pod to the right hand side um, just to add a little bit more interest to the painting but also to tell more of the story about the plant. At this point I'd just like to add a couple of notes. One is that I'm getting used to this new camera setup and a few times my hand does get in the way so I apologize for that. The other thing is that I am a very slow painter and this will be a very long video if I didn't speed up certain parts of the video so some sections will be sped up to four or eight times the usual speed. I'm lucky that I have this plant growing in my neighborhood so um, there was plenty of opportunity for me to find some seed pods so I have a few different ones here so I'm just going to decide which one I'll move them around have a bit of a look at them find something that's interesting and then I'll draw that up then transfer it to the watercolor paper ready to paint I've just added a ruler underneath these seed pods so that you can get an idea of what size they are. So this is the seed pod I've chosen to paint and I've just done, um, well, a reasonably accurate drawing of that. I've just done it straight onto tracing paper and now what I'll do, because I don't want to draw straight onto my watercolour paper, so um, I, because I don't want to dirty the paper, um, I'll just turn that over now and I'm going to use a B, you could use an HB or a 2B pencil, something that's going to be easy to transfer. And then I'm going to go over the whole painting, uh, the whole drawing, sorry, all of those lines and I probably need to sharpen my pencil. I have done some shading here. I'll just refer back to that. I won't transfer everything. I'll just keep this as my um, reference drawing. I will put this one in because this is a little seed. It's still in the seed pod. Now I just need to decide where to place this. And once I've decided on that, I might bring it down closer to the signature. Out there then I'll use a removable tape to just keep that in place that's this tape it won't damage the artwork now I'm going to use a 2H it doesn't really matter but it just needs to be sharp so then I can just go over these lines again now because I've got this tape down I can show you that the image is transferring under there I'll just go over the whole lot again trying to stick to those same lines otherwise it won't come through to the other side see it's not perfect but I think it's enough to work with just tidy that up a bit down the bottom and I'll keep this drawing beside and what I'll do now is again with the 2H so because I've got the B on the back of this paper, it's now B pencil that's transferred here, which is quite soft and will smudge easily. So now if I go over the top of this with my 2H, I can then use my kneadable eraser to get rid of the B underneath. It all sounds rather complex, but 
um, it's worth it because I just don't want to mess this up as it's already a completed artwork so this is a little bit delicate. I was just referring back to my photo and to the actual seed pod which I'll have to keep doing as I'm painting uh, just to add a couple more lines there now what I need to do uh, I have the tiniest piece of kneadable eraser here but I'm just going to just um, gently lift the B and that'll leave the hard line of the 2H so just so that it won't be too messy so I've got some nice good clear lines to start with and actually I think I can just add this margin here when you're working on something so small you really want to get these details right. I'm going to mix up some brownie colours and I'm going to use a yellow, I'm going to use Windsor yellow and I'm going to use permanent rose. You can probably do this really with any three primaries. You can just get slightly different browns and um, French ultramarine. Okay, now to start with, I think I want more of an orangey color. So I'm just going to keep adding until I get what I want, which is a bit of toing and froing. It's kind of close. It's a bit too red, I think. Maybe a little more. Just rinsing my brush in between so that I don't dirty my yellow up too much. I did just add a little bit more pigment into that. I'll just be careful and just try not to use too much water. Now I'm um, so I've mixed up this kind of orangey colour to start with and I'm just going to test it on a separate piece of watercolour paper here. Just make sure that it's not too, too far off. Okay, I think that'll do for these sort of lighter sections. I might actually put it all over the pod. So I've got a, this is a number two brush. So this sort of area here is lighter. So that's where I'm going to start with this color. So I don't want the paint to be too wet because I don't want to have to stretch this paper again. Um, but I think this should be okay uh, because if it's if it is too wet, it'll crinkle and then I I have to stretch it. But I think this will be all right. Just have to be a little bit careful. Now this edge here is light, whereas the middle section is a bit darker. Now I'm going to mix a darker colour here. So I'm going to use some French ultramarine. That's a lot, but that's okay. So 
some more permanent rose and that's far too pink and some more Windsor yellow okay I think that'll be good for the next section I'm going to come down here this bit's quite dark in here So even though I think that I've mixed up a dark colour, it's really not. I'm going to have to build up more layers. And as this dries, it's getting darker. So I'm just looking for where there are some darks. So these little pockets where the seeds would have been, they've got these uh, little divots. So I can soften the edges afterwards, but I'm just going to sort of map those in. This is quite painstaking, but it is a very delicate, um, intricate little subject. I just keep looking back to my subject or sometimes I'll take a photograph but you just make sure that you keep referring back to that so that you're on the right track. Little uh, shadows in between where the seeds have been sitting. It's sort of starting to take shape. And I'm just going to keep going over the same areas and the paint's getting drier. I've just popped a bit more blue in that to make that a bit darker there. Now I'm having a good look at this because there's actually some light coming through underneath. So it is kind of light along there and then it's dark where it's um, sort of folding down. Hmm, tricky. So I'm doing some little fine lines here, feathering it out towards the edge to give it that sort of softness of just gently rolling over. Now this is tricky up here because there is a seed in here and the seed's very black. So even though this is quite dark, that seed, when I finally do it, will have to be darker. So the good thing about painting from a, a real subject is that you can see all these slight nuances of tone, whereas sometimes a photograph will just make shadows just seem completely black and flat and you can't get any detail in there. Just going back over to this more reddish colour here and I'm going to pop a little bit of that 
just around the edge here. Now I've made that all a bit darker, I think I'm going to have to come back and make the edges darker again. I have to apologize I've just painted some of the lower section and then realized that my hand was in the way the whole time but I will go back and do more down there you can see how this paint is now quite um, quite pigmenty it's not as as wet as it was initially Now I'm going to try and mix up a really dark black for that seed and it's got to be very intense. I'm going to have to get really close. Try and keep my hand out of the way. Just mix that around a bit more. Um, now I'm just going to see if there's anywhere else. Like it's getting pretty close now. I realise it's not as intense in colour, but neither is the rest of my painting. That's just not my painting style. Just put a little bit of a shadow under there. Okay, and now I've got a another sort of a light brownish colour that I'm just going to pop here and there again. And just try and clean up a few edges. This is too light compared to the brown that's next to it, so I'll just intensify that a little more. Same with this one. There's a little knob just at the top where it joins onto the branch. I just left that little highlight there just to show that it's a, a shiny seed and 
Okay, I think that's done. I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out and I think it complements the rest of the painting nicely. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you're interested in learning how to paint the rest of the Acacia Pignantha, pop over to the workshop page of my website.